Hi, my name is Matthew Travis. I am Executive Director at the Aerospace Research and Engineering Systems Institute. Today, I would like to talk for a few minutes about fusion. We all know fusion powers the sun and gives us the light and heat that enables all life on Earth. Fusion, in fact, powers every star in the galaxy and every galaxy in the universe. Fusion also has a darker side to it. Fusion has enabled man to create the deadliest and most evil weapons that the world has ever seen. However, there's more to fusion than just stars and deadly thermonuclear weapons. Fusion holds the promise of nearly lim limitless, clean, abundant energy in the future, and fusion may just be the technology that enables humans to travel to the outer planets and even into interstellar space. That's where Ares Institute comes into play. We are in the process right now of promoting and establishing the Space Coast Plasma and High Energy Electrostatics Laboratory, also known as Sphere Lab, which we envision as a state-of-the-art yet cost-effective facility for the study of the challenges and problems of fusion technology. Our technology that we are studying is something called inertial electrostatic confinement fusion. The, the fusion in, in IEC fusion is produced in a device called a fuser. Compared to to other systems and devices, a fuser is relatively simple and and inexpensive to build and operate. However, IEC fusion does hold tremendous promise in both terrestrial and aerospace applications. What Sphere Lab will focus on primarily is aerospace applications. However, the research that will be conducted will also have applications for terrestrial challenges and problems. And I'll give a little background. In, a in inertial electrostatic confinement fusion, an electrostatic field is used to contain the fusion reaction as well as creating the extremely high pressures and densities necessary for the individual hydrogen ions and, and other atoms to fuse together and release the energy. The biggest challenge with IEC fusion right now is getting to the point where the power you generate from it is greater than the power you have to put into the system in order to maintain the reaction. That is the holy grail of IEC fusion. And that is where most of the research work in the world is, is focused on today. Even without that break even, though, the fuser still has potential valuable applications. For example, a fuser-based device could be used to provide attitude, attitude control or other propulsion on a spacecraft. When augmented by solar arrays or other power systems, the total power generated can be greater than that consumed. More importantly, the use of a fuser has the potential to reduce the size and mass of solar arrays that need to be assembled into the spacecraft to achieve a desired power output. The end result is that a spacecraft could either be built lighter or would be able to travel farther into the solar system than would be possible on solar power alone. Additionally, a hybrid IEC and solar power system would also have the benefit of producing, in theory, more electricity, more power, than the radioisotope thermal generators which are sometimes used on interplanetary spacecraft today. So what is Sphere Lab? What will Sphere Lab be? Located near Kennedy Space Center on Florida's Space Coast, Sphere Lab will provide an opportunity for university students and scientific researchers in Central Florida and indeed around the country to engage in cutting-edge plasma and fusion research. The laboratory will be a test bed for new technologies and potential commercial spin-offs from the research activities that are conducted there. 
the project has several different important aspects to it which I'll just briefly go over. Most importantly, once the laboratory is complete, it will be available for university students and research to conduct researchers to conduct their own experiments. The goal of the lab is to draw scientists together in the study of IEC fusion, the challenges in achieving power positive power production, and the different potential applications of fusion. The laboratory will investigate the potential aerospace applications of inertial electrostatic confinement fusion as well. Like I said before, that's a a main focus for us and one of the one of the characteristics of Sphere Lab that will set it apart from other laboratories is its focus on aerospace applications. But even 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 pursuing aerospace based applications Sphere Lab will still advance the goal of achieving earth-based fusion power production through the basic research that will be conducted. Now I realize many laboratories start out with five million, ten million, thirty million or more dollars of grants and contracts and that's simply not an option for us at this time. Uh, grant opportunities, government grant opportunities that is are fairly um, fairly scarce at the moment due to budget and economic considerations. Plus we also want to team with smaller schools, not just the MITs or Caltech or University of Illinois, but, but smaller schools and, and even community colleges. To do so, we have to make sure that whatever initiatives we put forth are done in, in, a, in a cost frame that is acceptable to those smaller institutions. So with that in mind, we are, we are definitely starting with modest objectives. Sphere Lab will be a state-of-the-art facility, but small and cost-effective for all university researchers. We're not having grand visions or pronouncements of solving all of the challenges involved with fusion, but the lab will still conduct valuable research. Hopefully, once up and running, the research that's conducted at the lab will bootstrap itself and hopefully lead to more funding, grants, and, uh, and a future expansion of the facility and its capabilities. Another primary goal of the Sphere Lab project is to involve the general public. The way we're going to do this is through heavy use of social media and webcasting. Video of the experiments conducted at the lab will be streamed live over the internet sometimes with opportunity for interaction with the researchers conducting the, conducting the experiments. This will give the public a hands-on, well, visually hands-on, opportunity to learn about fusion, to get excited about it, and will also provide more exposure in the public for fusion research in general. Of course, sometimes experiments will have to be closed to the public depending on, on a uh, intellectual property rights or, or uh, ITAR restrictions or things like that. But this telescience capability will be valuable not just with the general public, but will also be important in letting researchers in remote locations or overseas participate in the experiments conducted at the lab without having to be physically present. So that's the basic concept behind the Sphere Lab project. If you want to learn more, please visit our website at http colon slash slash www.aresinstitute.org and that is spelled A-R-E-S-I-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-E. -S -S -E. Now public involvement with Sphere Lab and with Aries Institute is very important. Aries Institute is a 501c3 tax exempt nonprofit registered with the IRS and you can see our official letter of, de of tax status determination from the IRS by visiting our website and you can download the PDF of that of that letter. Contributions to Aries Institute are tax deductible to the full extent of the law. Aries Institute requires 
financial as well as material and volunteer donations, but primarily, of course, in an economic recession, financial is most important. If you donate $10 or more, what you'll receive in exchange is eternal gratitude for one, plus a three DVD set of the final mission of Space Shuttle Discovery. The DVD will be available about a month after the mission ends. But we will take donations and contributions of any dollar amount. Any, any amount that you can support, uh, we fully, fully appreciate. And again, it is tax deductible. Your donation will not just support Sphere Lab, but all of Aries Institute's projects and programs. And your donation will absolutely help build the future of not just clean energy on Earth, but the future of human spaceflight in the years and decades to come. I doubt any of us will live to see the day that humans actually travel to another solar system, but the work that we're doing today will prove the theories discover the physics and lay the foundation for the technologies that will enable that to happen in the future whether it's this century or next the foundation is being laid today and even in its small part sphere lab will play a part in that research and your donation will make will help make that happen Check out our website. Thanks.